Welcome back. I'm Casey Campbell with Great Lakes Post as well as WJR 760 Detroit can be heard weekly on there. And we are pleased to be joined by the 2021 champion of the U.S. Nationals, now a two-time champion in the top field category of the U.S. Nationals, the one and only Steve Torrance. How's it going, man? I'm good, brother. How are you today? I am doing well. Um, my goodness. How, I know it's been a couple of days since you won it, but uh, how... Uh, I mean, what have the past few days been like? I mean, I know you've won it once, but what's it like to get it done again? You know, uh, it, it's truly just unbelievable. Uh, I won this thing in alcohol in 2005, and then we've won it twice in, in Top Fuel. And I, I, you tell everybody, it's it's the same race. It's just like any of the others but it's not the same race and it's nothing like any of the others because it's Indy. And, and so when you explain that to someone, they still don't quite understand if they're not a drag racing fan, they don't, they don't, well, I mean, does it pay more? Does it count more? Yeah. It pays more. The points count a little more uh, for the end of the regular season, but it's just about the prestige of the event. It's the U S nationals. And I've said it a million times. If you have a complete career and you win multiple championships and you do all kinds of stuff and you don't win Indy, it's like there's just that little asterisk there that you didn't get to check off. Yeah. And, and and so many people uh, have tried and, and, and so few have been able to do it. I mean, there's you look back, the guys that win there, they win there a lot. Look at Schumacher. He's won there, I don't know how many times, eight, nine, ten, whatever it is, yeah. and, and Big Daddy. And so when you when you you think of Indy, you think of the legends, you think of the greats, and they those are the guys and the girls that won Indy. And so uh, it's not just – even though it is, it's not just another race. Well, it, it is the U.S. Nationals. So. Um. Now to win it twice, I mean, I know you guys have been on the, the dominant trail, especially the last few years, um, going up against the Schumachers, the Forces, the Colettas, and everybody else. What is it, what's been the last few years, I, I got to ask you this, what's it been like to, what have you guys found that they can get your cars up and down the track? They don't, they don't give me that information because they know I talk a lot and I probably spill the beans. Uh, <laughs> man. To be honest with you, it, it, it's it's no one single thing, um, and it's no just trick of the week or tweak or tune. Honestly, at the end of the day, it's those Capco boys. It's those guys that work on that race car, and a lot of people from the outside looking in that don't understand drag racing, uh, but or, or don't completely understand how the cars work. Um, there's so many variables that go into tuning a top fuel car that everything on it has to be perfect for those adjustments to do what you tell it to do. And, and so when you see a team in a car that is, is doing what we're doing, you, you got to look and just say that's consistency. Those guys are doing the same thing every time. And so in the crew chief lounge, Richard Hogan, Bobby Lagana, the adjustments and the calls that those guys make, that's what happens. And there's no variable of, okay, the compression is just a little bit off because this guy torqued the head differently this time, or it's a different guy that, because, I mean, at the end of the day, a torque wrench is is as consistent as the guy using it. Just like, you know, there's it's it's a feel. Setting the air gap in the clutch, torquing the head studs. This guy may go, you know, an eighth of a revolution further on his feel than the next guy. This guy's drag on the on the feeler gauge is a little different. And, and if that changes, if that variable does not stay the same and isn't consistently there, those, those adjustments and those changes that Richard and Bobby make in the bell housing or to the compression or the overdrive in the blower, if, if they're not the same, then those changes don't make the same adjustment on the racetrack. And so 
people people think that we just all of a sudden started dominating the class and all of a sudden sudden running well but you got to look back and if you go back and look at photos it's the same guys every one of those guys on my race team have been with us since 2013 there's not been any turnover it's the same guys yeah. and and that that bond that relationship it 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 takes that at the racetrack to do well. And I mean, you know, I'm, I'm good buddies with Clay Milliken. We're good buddies with the, with the, the guys and gals on that team. Yeah. And they come over and they're standing at the back of the ropes and there's nothing more of a compliment than another team watching your team work. And so I'm back there talking to those guys Sunday you know, they're, they're not, they didn't, they, they had some misfortune in qualifying. They didn't make the show, but his whole team, there's five or six guys over there standing at the ropes watching our guys. And they said, man, it, it's, this is coming from another team that has been doing really well, but they say it's, it's enjoyable to watch and learn what these guys are doing. And they said, nobody's even talking. Like none of my crew guys are talking, just they're working. They don't have to say, Hey, I'm right here. Hey, look out it's it's repetition and it's what they do those are the, the those those guys right there are the reason for our success that's it's not what we found it's just what they have built and so you know i, I i'm a product of that yeah they have built a car that is that good and that consistent and that strong and whether it's me antron clay Brittany, whoever it is, when the car is that good, you drive well. It's 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 like, you know, I don't I, I don't do a lot of sports, but you know, if, if you're up there and you're say you're pitching or you're bowling or whatever it is, the the better you do before leading up to that, the better you do then. Yeah. You know, it it's being consistent breeds confidence within yourself. You say, okay, I'm doing this and I'm doing it right. And you continue to do the same thing instead of throwing darts in the air, just trying to figure it out. Yeah. So you mentioned about that, you know, the crew guys have been there since 13, all the same guys. No one's, I mean, it's, that's, that's impressive in any day because in NHRA and in really all of motorsports and really in all of sports, Guys come and go and come and go. But you, the team, has stayed all together. That's yeah. in itself. It, it really is. And it just, you know, it goes to show Richard, is, Richard and myself don't live in Indy. Hogan lives in Montana. I live in Texas. Bobby Lagana is the glue. Bobby and Dom both are the glue of Torrance Racing. Every, and and what those two guys have done is created a culture within our team uh, of just genuinely good Christian family oriented men that are together. And and you know in, in the in the old cowboy saying, everybody rides for the brand. Everybody is there to win. Everybody's there for TR. Everybody is there for more than just a job, you know, and, and anybody that works for someone else or has worked at different places, when you know that you're appreciated, when you know that you're respected and, and you're, you are, that your employer is glad to have you there and, and makes you feel that way yeah. or lets you know that you work harder. And, and my guys, I don't go there often. I don't go to the shop often. I talk to Bob. I talk to Gary. I talk to Justin and Hogan. I talk to, talk to the guys, but we see each other at door races and, and they manage themselves days that other teams are off. My guys are at the shop working and it's not because I said, Hey, you got to work from eight to five every day. Or Bobby says, Hey, you got to do this. They take that initiative upon themselves to go in and get what they need to get done, done. And if they're finished, they take off. If not, they're there working. And they may be there on Saturday morning just to finish some stuff up before their family gets up and gets going or whatever. 
to, to be prepared. And you can't, you can't buy that. You can't make someone do that. They either have it or they don't. And, and that's when that's, that's truly just the character of, of a person that wants to win, that wants to go that extra step. And so, I mean, I, I'm so blessed and thankful to have, to be part of a team like that. Yeah, for sure. I know there's also been, you know, you also became a father this year. Um, how's that experience been going? Man, it is by far the coolest thing I've, I've ever done in my life. Um, when they hand you that little boy or little girl, mine, mine, I got a little girl, uh, it's, it's a flood of emotions. I don't know what, what am I going to do? I mean, she is now counting on me for everything, but then it's, it's part of you. It's half you and half your wife or half or whatever, but it's, it's you. And to see how quickly she has grown in five months and, and to see her develop a personality, you know, it, it's been, a, it's been the coolest thing ever. And, Every one of the guys on the team just dote on her. You know, Bobby is Bobby's the 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 biggest, most raw emotion guy you'll ever meet. I mean, it, whether he's happy, he's sad, whatever, you can read Bobby and and loves kids to death. So we we got between my mom and Bobby Lagana, we have a house full of baby stuff because every time Bob goes somewhere, he gets her something. And every time she goes to my mom's house, she comes back with something new, but it, it, it's been really, really, really special. Yeah. Um, I know the, um, I know the oil business is going pretty well for you guys in Texas. How's that been going? Work has been good. been very fortunate to stay busy. Uh, you know, typically different presidents changes, uh, changes our industry. Um, but things have gone well right now. You know, we've, we had a big backlog of work working up to uh, where we're at now. And so we've been very fortunate to stay busy and, and do well. Uh, and, and I mean, that's where I'm at right now. I'm at work right now in the office and, and just try to keep going. So yeah. th things are going well. I know the countdown's coming up this weekend. Uh, that's it starts this weekend. How how busy? How what is the countdown like? Because it, it's because it, it's uh, it's something. Well. It is. And I mean, you know, I've been very outspoken in years past that I wasn't that big of a fan of it. Um, uh, I personally think that um, everyone had the same opportunity to to gain or, or lose points going up to that. And so I disagree with. I, I disagree with the format they have. Maybe maybe we do need some type of of countdown system or maybe they could modify the current system but I just feel that um it's a it's manufactured drama and and you know you can take a guy that wins take for instance us this year there's been 13 races and we've won eight of them and the closest person is 400 and something points away right. now that goes to 20 points and it's one round I get that because at this point we would have already won the championship and they want it to go to the end of the year, but there's no, you know, my dad is, is now, I think 70 or 80 points behind me That's and awesome. he skipped and he skipped four or five races, right. you know? Uh, and so that's where I have a problem with it. And I think that maybe NHRA is beginning to see that there is a flaw in the system because it's, you know, a lot of teams are, are bound to having to go to every race. Um, but, but there's teams that are not. And so you can, you can kind of manipulate the point system to the countdown and then just go race all of them. If you're trying to save money or if you're busy and you just want to race part-time and, and come out and run the countdown, it's only six races. Right. Um, and, and the other thing is you, you're crowning a champion based on 25% of a normal season. You know, you take 75% of the season, throw it away, and, okay, the last six are going to be your champion. Uh, it, it makes it a difficult pill to swallow if you do lose, uh, in which, I mean, I, everybody knows that I, I've been in that situation. 
but um, I, I don't think it is just indicative of who had the best car for the year and more so just who had the best car for six races. Right. So, so um, who knows, but it is what it is. And so we're going to, we're going to go with it and, and just, you got to really make sure that you've prepared well and really pay attention to everything that you're doing in these last, well, this year it'll be seven, but uh, pay attention because any mistake that you make in this time frame is, is going to be crucial. I mean, it, it could, it could definitely set you forward or back tremendously. Yeah, of course. All right. Well, Steve Torrance, thank you so much for taking some time out of your busy day to join us. We'll let you get back to work and uh, good luck uh, this weekend. Thank you very much, Casey. Good talking to you, sir.